Hello everyone and welcome to lecture 8. This lecture we will look into CI-CD pipelines and deployment strategies. Continuous integration and deployments are essential DevOps practices that we adopt to bring structure, reliability and automation to our ML systems. By applying CI-CD, we can automate testing, validate our pipelines and deploy our models into production with safety and efficiency. In the previous lectures, we implemented machine learning pipeline step by step including pre-processing, training, and deployment tasks. The last lecture, we combined all these together with Asset Bundle for workflow deployment. In this lecture, we will talk about catalog and workspaces, how data and assets are organized and accessed in structured way in Databricks environment. Then we'll go over a common git branching strategy and then see example of CI-CD pipeline. We have already interacted with Unity Catalog. We use it to create delta tables and register models. For a workspace to use Unity Catalog, it must be attached to a Unity Catalog Metastore, the top-level container for metadata of all data and AI assets. You can have one Metastore per cloud region, and a workspace can only be attached to one Metastore in the same cloud region. It is not uncommon for large organizations with international operations to have multiple Unity Catalog Metastore. In Unity Catalog, assets are organized using a three-tier hierarchy within the same Metastore. Catalogs, which contain schemas, and within those schemas, we would find various data and AI assets, such as tables, views, volumes, models, and functions. And they can be referred to using three-part naming convention, catalog.schema.asset. In a typical setup, each team or machine learning project would have three workspaces, development, acceptance, production, or they would have three different catalogs with their own schemas. But there are a few important rules in this setup. All workspaces, development, acceptance, and prod, should have read access to production data. It is important to ensure consistency across environments. Each workspace can only write to its corresponding catalog. So dev would write to dev, acceptance to acceptance, and production to production. Importantly, users only have direct access to development workspace. This keeps things safe and contained during experimentation. When it comes to deploying anything to acceptance or prod, that can only happen through continuous deployment pipelines, so no manual pushing which ensures security and traceability via service principles or managed identities. Let's also look at how this structure plays out with a typical data platform setup. Data engineering teams usually organize source data using Mendelian architecture, bronze, silver, and gold layers, each separated by environment. For example, they have bronze, acceptance silver, production gold, and so on. Each data product has its own schema, which helps with clear ownership and granular access control. Now, for machine learning teams, during development, they can read from the production or gold catalog. This means they can train models on a high-quality production-grade data from day one. That way, we avoid surprises caused by data inconsistencies and reduce model drift. When it comes to writing outputs like features or predictions, each machine learning workspace can only write to its own designated schema. So they writes to MLOps dev, acceptance writes to MLOps acceptance, and so on. So how do we control who sees what and where they can access it? In Databricks, there are two types of securables, workspace level and Unity catalog level. Workspace securables are things like notebooks, clusters, and jobs. Access here is handled through ACS, access control lists. Users can manage what they create and admins can manage everything in the workspace. If you create free edition, you are the admin of your workspace, so you can manage everything. When you, Unity catalog covers things like tables, schemas, and AI assets. Access here is more centralized and defined at the Metastore level with granular privileges. Metastore admins can transfer ownerships of objects, but every action is fully audit logged. We can also apply workspace bindings to prevent cross-project data access. 
For example, if a machine learning engineer is working on both hotel pricing and demand forecasting, you don't want them to accidentally access the wrong datasets. Unity Catalog supports open and isolated access modes. This allows us to strictly control which workspaces can access what. Finally, when organizing teams, we recommend giving full workspace access to only development environments. Use cluster policies to keep infra safe and make sure users share what, share what they create, because by default, only the creator has access to notebooks and jobs and the endpoints. Without that, collaboration can hit a wall. Let's have a look at the example here. The hotel booking team has all privileges and managed permissions on the MLOps dev hotel booking schema. In other environments, they have only read access, which allows them to safely use production data for training and validation. SPNs have all privileges and manage access on schemas in the corresponding catalogs and read only access to protocol hotel booking schema to ensure consistent data consumption across environments without risk of modify modifying production data. The privileges on the schema level are propagated to all underlying objects. Let's quickly remember Git flow. If you have used Git, you have probably come across Git flow, a branching strategy made famous by Vincent Dreisen back in 2010. Short living feature branches are created from main, like features foo, and developers can create pull requests to the main. This will trigger CI pipeline, and CI pipeline will run pre-commit checks, unit tests, and ensures version TXT does not already have a use deck. At least two approvals are required to merge, so there is no allowed direct pushes to main. Once, merge, once it's merged to main, then CD pipeline will be triggered. CD pipeline fetches the secrets dynamically per environment and deploys to acceptance and production. In an ideal setup, service principles are used for automation and CI CD pipelines. Each environment has a dedicated SPN with scoped permissions limited to its corresponding workspace. This separation ensures that automation processes only operate within their intended boundaries and follow the principle of least privilege. Now, let's go to our code base and see our CI CD implementation. Let's start with the CI part. You will find our GitHub Action Workflows in the .github workflows folder. We are using GitHub as our version control, but keep in mind, this setup might look slightly different on different platforms like GitLab, Bitbucket, or others. Let's open ci.yml. We start with naming our workflow of CI. Then we define when this workflow should run. In our case, it will run whenever someone opens or updates a pull request targeting the main branch. This way, we make sure all the checks and tests are executed successfully before merging code into production. Below, we define the steps. The first step is checking out the code from pull request using checkout action. This will clone the repo into GitHub Runner so that the next steps will have access to the code base. Next, we get the version from version.txt to see which tag would be released from this merge. Then we install UV, which is required for building our dependencies in the next step, and then we install all the dependencies. Then we run our pre-commit hooks for linting issues, formatting problems, or any custom roles defined in our pre-commit config.yml. And finally, we run our test using PyTest. We have a test folder with some unit tests written for data processor class. So this, this step will execute those steps. This is a basic CIML example. Let's now go look at the CD pipeline. We start by naming our workflow CD. Then we define when this workflow should be executed. We have two cases, either manually via workflow of dispatch or automatically on every push to the main branch. This is a typical setup for CD pipelines when you want deployments to happen only when changes are merged to the main production branch. Then we create the job and the steps. We are using a metric strategy which allows us to run the same job for different environments. Currently, it is configured for both acceptance and production. Then we grant write permission to this job, which is required to push tags later in the job. 
then these are the environment secrets and variables needed for our authentication with Databricks. Secrets are pulled securely from GitHub's encrypt encrypted secret store. Then we proceed with the steps. We start by checking out the repository, just like we did in the CI. And then we install Databricks CLI to interact with Databricks workspace programmatically. Then the next step configures the CLI authentication for Databricks. We use a custom profile named Marvelous. This is the profile used in Databricks bundle configuration, so Databricks CLI will expect to see the host and authentication method under this profile name. Then we install UV, which is required for building dependencies when we run Databricks bundle deploy. And then we come to the core of our CD process, deploying our bundle to Databricks. While we are deploying, we also inject the commit hash and the branch name via variables. These two variables are used in our bundle configuration. The last piece creates the tag based on the version in version.txt file. If we are deploying to production, then we read the version from txt, create a git tag, and then push this tag to, a remote, repo to remote repository. This helps us mark the commit that we want to production, which is important for the traceability and rollback. For our CD pipeline to run successfully, we need to make these environment secrets and variables available in our GitHub environment. So what we will do now, we will create a production environment in our GitHub repo. Then we will go to our Databricks workspace. We will create an SPN. Using this AP SPN, we will create client ID and client secret. And we will copy these secrets back to our GitHub environment. This is our main repository. In the settings, we have environments. We see two environments created so far, dev and acceptance. In each environment, we have two secrets and one environment variable, as expected by our CD pipeline. So we will create a new environment for production. We have the environment. So now we will go to our workspace and create an SPN for our client secret and client ID. In our workspace, as a workspace admin, in the settings section, you will see identity and access management. Here you can manage all the access and, and permissions. We go to service principles and we see the SPNs created so far. We already have SPN for dev and, produ dev and acceptance. Now we will create one for pr production. We will add new. We will give it a name, production SPN. Now we created production SPN. Using this AP SPN, we will create a new secret by clicking generate secret. We will give it a lifetime and then it will give us the client ID and the secret. What we need to do is copy copying these variables back to our GitHub environment. So I go to my production environment and I add them as first client ID. Let me check whether if I corrected the copy the right one. Okay, copy the client ID and add the secrets. And I will I will add the secrets. Add another one. Okay, now I also need to add Databricks host as environment variable. I can simply copy this from my URI. All right, now we created the environment and the variables and secrets expected by our CD pipeline. Now, what we will do is creating a pull request to trigger CI pipeline and then merging that pull request to trigger CD pipeline. I already have a feature branch called basically demo. I will create a pull request from this branch now.
it is only updating the readme file, so it's a very lightweight pull request. When we create, it will trigger the CI pipeline, and we will wait for it to be successfully completed. This is the CI that we've just covered. So it runs every step we've just seen in the CI.yaml file. Getting version control, installing UV and dependencies, running pre-commit checks, and all the tests as a last step. All right, this pipeline is successfully completed, so I can go back to my pull request and then merge. Ideally, we would expect someone else to approve this merge request, but for demo purposes, I will merge my own pull request without getting any approval. The moment I merge, it will trigger the CD pipeline, which you can see in the Actions section. This is the pull request trigger that I just merged. It is running for both acceptance and production environment. And for each run, it fetches secrets and variables per environment. Acceptance is completed. Production is also. Now what we expect to see is each environment run created a new workflow in our workspace. Let's go back to our workspace and see what we have. Jobs and pipelines. Yes, we can see in two new workflow workflows being created. Acceptance Marvel character workflow is created using Acceptance SBN and Marvel character workflow is created using Production SBN. Each workflow is reading and writing to its corresponding catalog. We have catalog for dev, acceptance, and production. For these workflows to run successfully with the given identities, meaning SPNs, we need to give access to those SPNs for their corresponding catalogs. In catalog, we have acceptance, dev, and prod. For acceptance catalog, in the permission section, we need to grant our acceptance SPN to be able to read and write to this catalog. So we search for our SPN, acceptance, and we give all privilege, privileges to this SPN. We need to do the same for our production catalog. Permissions, grants, and search for production SPN. And we give all privileges. Now we are able to execute, this, ex execute these workflows. In this lecture, we have seen example workspace setup with different catalogs and environments, creation of SPNs, and example CI CD pipelines. Next lecture, we will talk about monitoring. See you there!